empathy actually is also very selfish at the end. <laughs> Watch a very interesting like fucking Facebook video about this a long time ago that was like, if you're being empathetic and you're thinking about the emotions of other people, you're really thinking about your projection of what that emotional experience must be. So you're really thinking about yourself again. Sure. You could say that empathy is the practice of sort of melting in the oneness of us all. Absolutely. It, is I mean? like it could that. be the complete disillusion of ego. I mean, it could be empathy could be like, oh, wow, I get it. We're all the same. And that hurts. This episode is kind of long. So, you know, enjoy. This episode of Dear Jessamine has profanity, sex talk, weed smoking, and a bunch of other shit that is just not for everybody. And you also may not agree with the stuff we say or how we say it. And we think that's great. Today, we're recording from stolen Ohlone land. We promote cannabis medicine to people over 21. And if you're not 21, come back when you are. Hey, Ash. Hey, Jessica. <laughs> How are you doing today? Um, I'm good. Yeah, I think I've just been working all mm-hmm. day. Same. So I'm like pulling, trying to like, yeah. Oh my God. Assess the question. The tr- I cannot tell you how much I identify with what you are saying. It's like, okay, where are we? What's happening here? Who, totally. What show is this? Um, yeah, I actually am like glad to be sitting here with you of all the things. I feel like it's been a a day of various work things mm-hmm. happening. And um, it's actually, I mean, can I say something that this is like what's new in paradise, but also like um, just a check in mm. on what's been up today specifically. We had our first employee benefits meeting where we went over the insurance options with uh, our insurance rep. And uh, this is, I have never, uh, my great fear with hiring people was being accountable to them and um, needing to provide consistent pay for everybody. Mm -hmm. And, and not just for each individual, but for their children and then for them to make plans for their children and to do all of this like long-term planning that is as someone who likes to fly by the seat of their pants, very intimidating. Mm -hmm. And so to have grown to a place where we can now offer insurance packages for our employees feels like one of the most important days, um, as a business owner, one definitely, certainly one of my proudest days. And I'm like, all through the meeting, I was just like, this is so fucking boring, but I'm just like so happy that this is happening and like very, very proud and pleased and um, and grateful for how, we've, for how we've grown and how we are continuing to grow. Mm. And um, yeah, but all of that is definitely like, okay. It is, it is a work day so that now we're here doing this podcast and I'm like, what, what, who, what are we talking about on the show? Tell what's me. a, what's been, what's good with you? What's a new in paradise? What are you calling in this week? Mm, what am I calling in this week? I wanted you to go first. Yeah, you I go can first. go first. Um, I'm calling in humility, but humility before the before myself to humble myself before myself because I have been realizing recently just how much my unhappiness resides within myself that it does not exist anywhere with it doesn't exist in another person or in a location or in a type of work or something like if I feel dissatisfied, it's always coming from inside myself. Mm. And that dissatisfaction, that's something that I think I've been like, okay, I, I can understand this logically. But this week I've been thinking a lot about how like I can just be a novice all the time. I can just say like, I don't know how to do this or I'm just trying it for the first time and that I can humble myself 
before this version of myself that thinks that I should have it all together or that thinks I should know all these different things and like who thinks that I should, that is my worst, my worst critic, like humbling myself before my worst critic to say that like all of your judgments are true. Everything that you think I don't know how to do, you are correct. And that's it. There's no explanation. Just that's and coming from that place. Um, I was thinking about a lot in the shower this morning, actually, just how much I am like looking for a place to put my dissatisfaction. And it is a hundred percent originating from inside of me. Mm. And it just offers me so much. It is offering me a lot of release and a lot of, um, joy feels too simplistic, but it's offering a lot of access that wasn't there before I started thinking like that. So that's this week. Humility before my most, humbling myself before my most, my worst critic. Mm. I think I'm inviting in like forgiveness, which you know, similar to what you're saying, like has to start with the self because there's no grudge that you're holding on to that you think is about somebody else. It's not really about yourself, but I specifically am finding the ways that I like hang on to power through like resentment Mm -hmm. and like grudge holding, just not serving me, but I don't really, you know, I have the intention and the desire to not maybe, but I don't, there's this other element of like having the skill set. So maybe I'm calling in the skill set to forgive. Um, Cause I think those are different. Sometimes mm-hmm. I want to be like, I want to let this go, but I don't, but it's not going, you mm-hmm. know? And so whatever that is, call it skill set, call it I don't know, some kind of true willingness or something. But um, yeah, I'm calling in that, mm-hmm. that release, that forgiveness, that surrender to what is. Mm-hmm. So I don't need to like, pretend that with my judgment and my critique or my like telling someone about themselves is going to offer anything but toxic residue. Mm -hmm. But um, I also like to call in a pep in my step. I'm feeling a little Mm -hmm. bit like (laughs) maybe like, I think we're recording later in the day than we typically do. And so I'm like, isn't it the Mm. end? (laughs) (laughs) Totally. It's not quite the end. So a pep. In the step. You're always good for a pep in the step. Not always. I mean, maybe it's not the right pep or the right yes. step or the right <laughs> foot or the right beat or something, but you find pep. lots of different rhythms. Pep does occur. <laughs> You're really good at that. You're really good at looking on the sunny side. Like Thanks. finding the bright side. Thanks. Yeah. Not today, mate. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> I I'm enjoying your um your seriousness Mm -hmm. it's a very i feel like i'm taking a lot in and then i'm really taking it in today Mm -hmm. really hearing the universe tell me things and the you know the universe tell me things through people and Mm. you know i get a lot of critique for talking and not listening and so i cherish the days that i flip-flop that a little bit Mm -hmm. because it just comes naturally sometimes Mm -hmm. not every day yeah Oh, the other thing I'm calling in because I've been listening back to Dear Jessamine episodes and I don't really speak up into the microphone very often. (laughs) Sometimes I just trail off as though I'm whispering to a friend in my office, in my house, which I also am. So anyway, yeah, I just wanted to be more brighter with my vocal offering. Oh my God. And I'm going to ask you, what's that voice you're using? This voice? Who is that? Uh, What's that person? The first thing that came to mind was when I was when I did work study at my community college in Durham, it's called Durham Technical Community College. Mm-hmm. And I answered phones and I gave tours and I worked the front desk of the like student center. Mm-hmm. And I made it's really- like a really cushy work study. Why cushy? No, it was like fun. Well, we did, there was a lot, there was a handful of us, I think maybe just, you know, the sorting hat of the universe or whatever, but everybody who worked there was great. I loved them. Folks were- hardworking people everybody had kids or taking care of their parent or you know something mm-hmm. community college blue collar style we were really mm-hmm. getting our hands dirty but yeah the it was good but I, I did have a it's funny I was the only white person there surprise surprise that happens a lot in my life these days but um 
they were folks were telling me about code switching for the job Mm -hmm. and i was like i think they were sort of making fun of the fact that i did it also Uh totally or i think there was also (laughs) I think there was also this conversation one time about whether or not I was code switching to be in space with them. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. And then going back to like normal on the phone. Oh, interesting. You know, we get into it. Yeah. Good, good stuff. I think that probably part of that experience led me to study the portion of linguistics that I studied in college because I, Mm. I enjoy the process of thinking about like, how do we communicate and why and what does it sound like to other people and what are judgments that are made based on what the sounds we make sound like and you know that kind of stuff so anyway uh that's that voice i love the just enunciate you know know, enunciating projecting projecting and enunciating yeah uh teeth in the lips i just want to say that. what is it teeth past the past the tongue tongue and the teeth Teeth i don't know it i don't know (laughs) my brother did theater though I was just repeating what Jack Black said in School of Rock, and he himself was actually mumbling that part, so I don't (laughs) really recall. But what you said reminded me of an experience that I had um, at community college when this, it was like a math or a science class. I can't remember which one, but this girl in the class came in very late. Like, It was like an hour long class and there was like 15 minutes left. Mm. (laughs) So she came in at the 45 mark with her kid and she like sat her kid down and like gave like put like notebook, coloring book, some shit in front of the kid. And then she like sat down and got to work and was like Mm -hmm. taking notes, whatever. And that is how I remember community college. And that's how I like sometimes I'm just literally inspired by that person in retrospect because mm-hmm. I'm like that bitch was like I am not missing class like I Jaden your bus was late or whatever the fuck happened I don't know you missed the bus I don't know what happened I don't I don't know some sitter canceled I don't know what happened <laughs> but she was like I am going to school today mm-hmm. and when I was at UNCG it was like completely different like people. I think that at a four-year school, there is a lot of taking for granted that happens Mm -hmm. with um, the college experience and people feeling like, you know, like student loans are paying for it, parents are paying for it, whatever. It's not like as physical, like you don't feel the immediate connection to the money that you're spending as you do at a community college, in my experience, where it's like, Like, no, bitch, I had to pay for the semester in this. I can tell you exactly how I pay for the semester. I can tell you how I pay for these books. And I'm in school to learn right now. Like, this is what I'm doing. Not like I'm going to go to school for four years. And then maybe I'll go to school for another four years later in life because those first four years were just playtime. Yeah, it was playtime. So I don't know. It's very inspiring. I definitely mourn the loss of playtime, too. Yeah. Like I, I didn't have the a traditional college experience and I maybe just recently got over the like resentment mm, <laughs> that mm-hmm. I had for so long about that. Cause the playtime in your youth is necessary for yeah, creative true. capacity and all kinds of cool stuff. So yeah, I don't begrudge anybody their playtime, but it is definitely noticeable how that goes, <laughs> you know, values I think get like forged in those spaces. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I don't know how old that kid was, but if that's the quality of life, I feel like that parent is teaching that kid a great Literally. deal about discipline. You exactly. Know? Literally. And, um, what it means to like do stuff that you don't like because you want something more at the end of it or whatever. Exactly. And so, yeah, that's, I appreciate that story. Yeah. What we do in. Yeah. Do, do you want to do the trivia from last week? Sure. Well, yeah. Well, uh, Okay. Last week's trivia question was, what is the name of the HBO show about lesbian landowner and industrialist Anne Lister? And the answer is go. Gentleman Jack. If you got Gentleman Jack without Googling it. No Googles. Your prize this week is a hug. A hu- like a virtual hug like from us right now like a real hug but mm. in like a holographic real hug 
Okay, so it's 2055. The planet is somehow still here. There's still somehow humans on it. We're dreaming big. And in that world, from now, set the hologram now, we're giving hugs. I'm giving you a hug. 2022 hug to 2055 hug. I love that. Holographic. That's what you win. Yeah. Nice work, mate. Yeah, all right. You nice work. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I'm excited about these fa- this favorite things yeah. this week. These are my favorite Okay. What's your favorite thing? This no, week? you gotta start. Oh, I mean, I guess I can. Oh, I start. I can start. I have a few. Oh, yeah, I can. No, I can definitely start. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a few favorite things this week. Yep. Um, one of my favorite things is that it is our first week doing an underbelly class capsule shoot in California. Woo! We have shot. Yeah, we shot all the capsules up to now in North Carolina in Durham specifically. And this is our first shoot here in California. And our, my co-founder of the Underbelly came out to um, be with us through the shoot week. And we have our team members from Almeda Street who have been doing the camera and audio work. And Tenderfire Media has been handling the production management And all of these teams coming together in one space has really filled my heart with a lot of joy. And I really, that's one of the coolest things to me about like building a team where you don't all get to work together is that when you do, when you don't work together physically, Mm. but then when you do come together physically, it's like you've always known each other. Mm -hmm. And that's, I've noticed that consistently about meeting people on the internet that like, if you meet someone on the internet, you could talk for years and never meet that person. And then when you do meet them, it's literally like you never didn't know that Mm -hmm. person. Like Mm -hmm. all the time that was spent online meeting was, it just, it was like you were meeting in real life. Like i I just really appreciate that. I also, one of my favorite things this week is the various, I said the fruit trees, but the variety of different edible vegetation in our yard, Mm. in the backyard here. And like there's orange tree and lemon tree and the fig tree is so prolific right now. Mm. And like, it's just, it adds a lot to the space and it's just so gorgeous and makes my heart sing. And then the other thing that is my favorite thing this week is a book that I've been reading very slowly for some time and I brought it here so that I can show it to our friends here. Love that we put a show and tell segment in our show. Well, you gotta. I agree. You gotta. This is called Words of Wisdom and it's by Ram Das. It's actually not by Ram Das. It's words that Ram Das said during his life mm. that post-death somebody curated and compiled into this book but it's just it's literally like every sentence is gold every Mm. sentence is weighted and something to think about and I feel like it's by the toilet because it I think is that kind of thought it's it's a good thing to be thinking about when you're sitting for Mm -hmm. a moment Mm -hmm. and so when I'm reading it I'll only read like a page or two at a time but even just reading literally like a sentence or a paragraph, I find to be so beneficial. And I marked one that I read recently that I thought I would just read here mm-hmm. because it is so, <laughs> I found it to be very inspirational and motivational. He says, you are training to be nobody special. And it is in that nobody specialness that you can be anybody. Mm. Oh, definitely recommend this book i really like this book ram das words of wisdom what's your favorite thing this week my favorite thing this week is a little podcast called dharmacosm dharmacosm um which is by tender fire media i'm not usually a woot woot type person but woot woot oh you're being so supportive um yeah so it's funny that ram das came up in your favorite things because mm. one of the funny things about my um, teacher, who is my co-host on the show, Dharma Kazam, is that she was first influenced by Ram Dass also. Is that right? Yeah. Her, um, I love that about her. The clergy member of her family's church gave her a Ram Dass book when she was in Absolutely. youth group. 
And she was like, what? So that's really, a real one, dude. It's a really neat overlap. But mm-hmm. yeah, this person's been like my spiritual teacher for like eight years, maybe a little more. And yeah, I just really care about her a lot, like in a deep way and have been following her teachings for a while and just approached her with an idea that we would have a show where I ask her questions like I would in like a one-on-one or like a I've I've seen her in silent meditation retreats that she's hosted before and just really got a lot out of the the time in those silent retreats when you would talk to the teacher one-on-one or when she would give a dharma talk and um so I kind of wanted to make a show that was both of those things but like my teacher's really cool and like irreverent and like sees things in really expansive ways that I think uh, she just can be she can be so I can level with her in a way that I really enjoy. And the show I really like because it's sort of like ancient wisdom, real world problems. Mm -hmm. So check it out if you want to. It's on Spotify, D-H-A-R-M-A. Yes. C-O-S-M, Cosm. Yeah, and uh, so that's my favorite thing this week. It's been like this funny, very easy process to do with her, to record with her, to get scheduled with her. She lives in another country. It's like always such a breeze. And it's been so hard for me to get out of my own way and like produce Mm. it with as much as I feel like it deserves. Mm -hmm. And um, it has everything to do with like feelings that come up in me of whether or not I deserve the show to exist. And so it's been a real feat of self will, I think, and determination that it's out (laughs) and I'm happy about it. And it's probably going to release episodes monthly, but um, that's that. And that's out now. So I'm really, really proud of that. Not that's that. That is amazing. Thank you. I've been watching you do this shit and it is incredible. You have been incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's been really fun and really, really hard. A lot of tears, a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. Like life. It's a beautiful concept. (laughs) And the, no, I mean, and like the pieces I've heard, I've just been like, that's incredible. And your teacher, Jaya, is so incredible and really has so much to offer. Mm spiritually and i feel like great really grateful that you have captured this wisdom at this particular time in both of your lives and it's this really interesting call and response of like uh, you asking genuine questions as a person on the spiritual path and she being another person on the spiritual path who's got a couple decades on you can offer feedback and wisdom from that place and i just think it's really cool when I thank, oh. go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 please, please, please. Earlier, when I thanked you for rolling the weed, you said I'm grateful to be able to, and that's exactly the posture I show up to that show with, for yes. sure. I was gonna say that it reminds me of this version of Eckhart Tolle's "The Power of Now," the audiobook version, mm-hmm. wherein the publishers of the book, the Canadian and the American publishers are reading the questions that Eckhart has been asked in the book. Mm. And then Eckhart is responding to them with his answers. Mm. It's all what's written in the book, but the way that they produced it, Uh it's this really powerful student teacher exchange that Dharma Cosm feels Mm. like it's in that lineage. And it's really cool to me. Yeah. I've been thinking, um, what's the one you love? Uh, Rilke. Oh my God. Letters to a Young Poet. Oh, my God. I've been thinking that, too. I'm about to restart that. That's my favorite thing every week. That's cute. Letters to a Young Poet. Specifically, the version that is on Audible, narrated by Dan Stevens. And I forget the other guy's name, but Charlie. Shit. It's on Audible. It's (laughs) so good. Oh, real cut. You say your name. (laughs) My name real. Okay, so okay, yeah. that so, is our favorite thing. <laughs> should we do the it's nice query to have like a ridiculously long list of favorite things? Yeah, there's. I feel like it's nice to give a fuck about something and That's to be right. enjoy life and be happy. Um, All right. With this week's dearie query, thank you so much for sending it in. And if you have a question for us that you would like to have read on the show, you can send it to the chat box on dearjessamine.com. What's the question this week? Dear Jessamine, 
I am a 45 year old black straight female recently divorced from a white straight male after raising three children and sharing our lives together for 23 years. Ultimately, I left the marriage because he was a narcissist and held some very problematic racist ideologies that I chose to ignore for decades. I feel like I have a new opportunity to explore life. Recently, an ex-boyfriend has re-entered my life. We had a complicated past together, an abortion and a messy breakup, and now that we've rekindled our friendship, I am in turmoil. For starters, he's married. In parentheses, as an Aquarius, I have a high tolerance for unconventional relationships, but this feels wrong since his wife has no idea about me. To further complicate matters, he has shared with me that he has herpes. That said, when we spend time together, hours pass in moments and we are deeply connected. What the hell should I do? Number one, have you ever dated someone with an STD? How do you navigate this as herpes is pretty common? Number two, I'm constantly assessing him for signs of narcissism, and it's hard to trust after being emotionally abused for so many years. And number three, is it selfish of me to pursue a relationship with a married man? Help a sister out, girls. I need some unconventional wisdom pronto. I love these questions. I love these questions. I love you, person who is out here. Congratulations on your divorce. That is so intense and a hard decision to make. And like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I I just I love that for you. Um, I have a lot of thoughts. Me and, too. Yeah. Should we just go, or do you want to yeah, structure totally. it at all? No. But, I mean, maybe question by question. Yeah, or do I you have it. more to say about the intro? Nope. I, oh, I do have one other thing to say. I really love that you're like, as an Aquarius, because I, I fuck with Aquarians and y'all do, yep. y'all are down for unconventionality. And I feel like I there's a that. logic, right? That's like, well, totally. when you when you say it that way, actually, that makes a lot of sense. And I, I will date that way. That's and so Aquarius funny. is like, it's such an interesting way to be an air sign because they're like, <laughs> learn everything so that you can break the rules mm -hmm. like they're like no i will learn literally every rule mm -hmm. and then fuck your rules i think it's so so great i love it um okay yeah i can go i can start with number one yeah please i have net i i don't think i've ever dated someone with an std but i have a very close friend family member who contracted um herpes through a partnership that they were in for years and years. And I remember they actually had broken up and then had this like final fuck. Mm. And the ex hadn't taken his medicine or something. There was like an outbreak. And so my friend contracted herpes there. Mm. And so I was, I've talked to them for years about what that has meant for them. Mm. So it's not the same as having dated somebody with herpes at all, but it is the same as talking to somebody navigating having herpes. And I think it's like without getting too specific and like out, you know, dating this in a weird way, like keeping it evergreen, Google what to do. Like there are so many things to do. Mm, there's mm -hmm. medicines that keep outbreaks under control. There's not fucking during outbreaks. There's all kinds of different uh, barrier protection like s that you can get. And it's probably just always getting better, that technology. But I think the way you navigate it is through um, really thoughtful, radical honesty. Yeah as you might get through anything or navigate anything, I should say. Um, and I think that the thing about an STD is it sort of puts the person who is carrying that in a position of like valuing themselves enough to like talk about it in a way that transforms the shame, takes the shame away because there's no reason to have, everybody's body is different, literally everybody's. Mm -hmm. And this is one way that a person's body can be. And so, uh, respecting the self and respecting the partners enough to make sure that that's always just being talked about, I feel like is something that my friend would have wished had happened in their life. And I think that's all that you can also ask for as a person who's like, you know, fucking anybody whose body is any which way, you know? And so that's, that's what I have to say about number one. Yeah. I was going to say that I feel like it's really, important for all of us to be more open about our statuses with everything because if we all were more open this wouldn't be an issue because right. like someone having an std is just a part of who they are as a person it's not like a judgment of it's not something there's nothing wrong with them they have an std 
And like, I have had a partner who has um, herpes and they told me about it very early on in our relationship. And I felt like it was one of the most loving, like, uh, powerful things mm-hmm. for them to do. Like it was very much like ownership of self and just saying like, this is what's good a hundred percent. And I feel like there's so much dishonesty and lying that happens in relationships. And like, I, at the time when it happened, I think I had a reaction similar to how this person is reacting, which is like, like, how should I feel about this? Mm-hmm. And how I ended up feeling about it was like, that's dope. Thank you for telling me. And I also feel like cold sores are extremely common, like mm. extremely. And I think that if we all just talked about it more, because there's a lot of reasons that you might get cold sores. Like, if there was more honest dialogue about it, then I think it would make it easier to have that kind of conversation. Well, we do that. I mean, I get cold sores. I yeah. would assume yeah. that this, for some reason, I'm assuming that this is about genital herpes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Heard. I get cold sores. And when I feel it coming yeah. on, I tell you and we can't kiss. Oh, okay. Days. I was thinking about cold sores and then mouth i guess i wasn't thinking about genital herpes but i mean same same thing. yeah like i feel like it's dope that he said something about it totally yeah and you can keep like talking about it like there's no reason to yeah. not i think that's my main thing is just being like how's it feeling like what's going on like mm-hmm. or if you see something say something like hey what's going on here like does that feel like those other ones or whatever like there's no reason to like not be in consistent dialogue if y'all are fucking Mm -hmm. there's just no reason not to and i actually now that we're talking about it i have had partners who have hpv and so that's not and that's really common the note of really common that is really common and it um changes different ways specifically that like i'll just say it this way it changes the ways those folks feel comfortable fucking yeah actually i mean that's the thing too is like if you think about it like We've all had and heard about and done and experienced and ourselves offered other people the experience of like all kinds of things There's, you know, that aren't a huge deal that literally are just like, a you know, a, a new way to do it, a different way to think about it. There's an episode of Girls where it's revealed that Jessa has HPV mm. and Shoshana says, Oh yeah, Jessa said Jessa has it. She says all adventurous women do. And I just have I feel like that's the best way to put that. <laughs> like all adventurous people have something. If you've done anything, I mean, some shit's gonna happen. Yeah. Like that's a part of it. Totally. And it doesn't make you less of a person. Definitely. But it is you said that there's no reason to not say anything. I disagree. I feel like there is a reason to not say something and it's fear. And like oh, yeah. fear I mean, of what the other person is gonna think or yeah. that you're going to be ostracized forever, culled from the herd. And you like, don't want that fucking herd if your real actual self can't be there. That's real. I mean, I feel you as a person who walks on the margins i feel you totally. but i think that there are many who would not like to be called from the herd i wish that we just let it be known what's actually happening in the herd and not like pretending like we're all like our shit don't stink everybody shit stinks that's fine totally all right question number two question number two isn't like really a question but it's a, a thought yeah And it is, let's remind. Yeah. I'm constantly assessing him for signs of narcissism. And it's hard to trust after being emotionally abused for so many years. Yeah. This is what I would say to that. Only because I'm not talking to him, the the Mm -hmm. ex, the narcissistic ex. um, And I'm not talking to the new person that you're constantly assessing. But to say up up in the top part of the comment question well okay this is what i'll say is i feel like you took this really powerful posture of saying like i left the marriage i left because i wasn't doing that anymore i'm not i'm not interested in that i don't want that and i can see in the beginning of question number two that you're constantly assessing him for signs of narcissism narcissism that you're not kind of done with it or something and that like it's still very much lingering in you 
and to say it's hard to trust after being emotionally abused, it's like, yeah, but like you got out of that. So you can be in a position where you're not experiencing that anymore. I'm saying this in a weird way, but really what I want to, it's coming from the 15 commitments of conscious leadership, which is like first commitment is you're hundred percent responsible for yourself. And in that, I feel like to even just notice the ways that like, this is still very much up for you and that you have total responsibility and an opportunity for yourself to heal from that, what has been going on for the last, I mean, really long time. Like yeah, 23, 23 years, years is, is a long, a long time. time to be in patterns with somebody and then all of a sudden to not be, but then to be in different patterns with another somebody, a different somebody. And I think that you know, this is something I've never done is like take time in between partnerships to really like remember who I am. Mm, mm -hmm. And I don't suggest that to people just because I literally have never done it. So I'm not trying to tell you do something I've never done. And I get why not do that. But there are these questions that are coming up for you that I just want to say are not about this new relationship, this old boyfriend. Um, even if this person does things that are similar, it's for different reasons because they're a different person and it has different, you know, it carries different weight and different triggers with you as y'all's connection is a whole different connection. And so if you see things that concern you, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be, I would hate for you to put on this new person the mold that you're coming from. And I would hate for you to like, feel like those are the only options that this person is doing something maybe even that behavior is like similar to what you used to see happen but it's not the same and maybe that person has this new person has a completely different reason for doing the same thing you know mm -hmm. maybe like um i don't know cleaning your car isn't about controlling you it's really about being kind and there are no strings attached this time and whatever mm -hmm. i don't know what the what the situation is but what are signs of narcissism <sighs> I think everybody's narcissistic. So that's my my thought with this is that all human beings are narcissistic. I no, go ahead. But where does empathy play a role? That's I just want to slide that in. That as you is say exactly your thing. right. That's just what I want that's to slide. That's so in. real. Some people are not empathetic. Some people are not empathetic at all. Or can't experience empathy. They don't. It's not a part of the. It's not a part of the equation. But maybe that's what the difference is between like identifying a self uh, yeah. in the world yeah and being a narcissist yeah, is like if I, I can identify a self i can be like no baby i can't hang out with you today i have to work my job all day yeah and that be like still having empathy for the other person's reality whereas like yeah anyway i guess that's what's coming up for me wondering about the word narcissism what it means yeah i mean it feels like what this person is saying is that narcissism is like being so self-involved that like you're disrespectful of the person that you're in a relationship with, mm -hmm. that you don't consider their emotions or their needs or anything. And I mean, I think that I can be this type of person where like I get very involved in myself and very much like to, a, there's like a fear factor even mm -hmm. of relying on another person or be, like being close to another human being thinking that if something if I'm like uh if if I'm vulnerable with another person like can I rely on them like am I what's going to happen if I'm vulnerable mm. I think that that can be translated by other people in different ways Kylie has put some signs of narcissistic personality disorder according to the dsm-5 here and as a former therapy student i just want to point out all of the issues i have with dsm-5 but this is still a helpful mm -hmm. guide in terms of like what is the definition mm -hmm. do you want to read a few yeah um it says a grandiose logic of self-importance mm -hmm. a fixation with fantasies of infinite success control brilliance beauty or idyllic love a credence that he or she is extraordinary and exceptional and can only be understood by or should connect with other extraordinary or important people or institutions. A desire for unwanted, unwarranted admiration. A sense of entitlement. Interpersonally oppressive behavior. No form of empathy. Resentment of others or a conviction that others are resentful of him or her. Mm a display of egotistical and conceited behaviors or attitudes. So 
to your point, it feels like the empathy is the, like, it certainly feels like the turning point for me because I'm like, I think a lot of people are narcissistic Mm -hmm. based on this description, Mm -hmm. which feels accurate to me. Like, I think that's the whole thing about being human is that we're always thinking about ourselves individually. Even when we think we're thinking about other people, we're actually thinking about ourselves. Very often, even thinking about your children is thinking about yourself. Mm. Somehow it is actually that. And that there's some way that that has to be acceptable without this interpersonally oppressive behavior. But mind you also, like, I would say that if I was being super honest, I have a little bit of all of this. I absolutely And do. I tried to have a, a fixation with fantasies of infinite success, control, brilliance, the beauty, language ideal, love. I'm like, I know exactly. I'm like yeah. a fixation with the fantasy. I do have like uh, goals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I think you're right for sure that mm-hmm. we're all necessarily thinking about ourselves and the things that we need. Mm-hmm. And I think this, this description, thank you, Kylie, for dropping this in. This mm-hmm. description... I think talks about the level to which Mm -hmm. this is like in exclusion of empathy, Mm -hmm. there is entitlement, like Mm -hmm. an exclusion of whatever joy or something. There's resentment for others or conviction that others are resentful of. Empathy is very helpful. Like how would you define empathy? Empathy being. Um, Feeling what other, what another person might be feeling. Yeah. The ability to feel what another person might be feeling. Yeah. It's very helpful, but I also think that, Empathy actually is also very selfish at the end um, because it becomes, I watched a very interesting like fucking Facebook video about this a long time ago that was like, if you're being empathetic and you're thinking about the emotions of other people, you're really thinking about your projection of what that emotional experience must be. So you're really thinking about yourself again. Sure. Or, I mean, I think that's a very like man logic like weird way to think about that because if you could say that empathy is the practice of sort of melting in the oneness of us all absolutely it you know is i mean like it could that. be the complete disillusion of ego i mean it could be empathy could be like oh wow i get it we're all the same and that hurts you know that's exactly what it is i think that's exactly what it is but it's like it is multifaceted yeah like everything in this world is and um it can also be to your detriment to be overly oh, empathetic. Yeah. I do feel like it's a good idea to be present to like what you did not appreciate about how someone else treated you or like how you felt in another partnership. But I do also think that it's really important to just think about your experience to lean in, <laughs> like to lean into the narcissism and think mm-hmm. about like the ways that you're being narcissistic or like are looking for maybe looking for something from another person that they can't offer mm-hmm. and um, and to see your role in the abuse cycle. And I don't know, I'm sure I could, I know that that's a problematic thing to say. The but the thing is that you and I have problematic, bu- problematic, I think controversial opinions about our opportunity in this life yeah, and how much of an opportunity and how much agency in each individual one of us has, yeah. even if it's just to choose to breathe. Even if it's to choose to leave someone to say like I'm or to leave a situation and be totally. like, I'm good on that. Yeah. Like, I see who you are as a person and you can go with God. Like, that's fine. And I think I want to just try and clarify more about what I said earlier. It's not that I'm saying I'm just saying be done with the narcissism. Mm. Don't mm. constantly assess. If you see that this motherfucker ain't up to the task, move on and just mm. don't stay with bitches who don't do the right thing no more. And I, I just constantly assessing feels like um obsessing mm. over the idea of narcissism and i'm like look you left it you can just be done and then and and not and if that means being done with this person too like you're you're on a roll you know what i mean otherwise like let it be done and let it let it actually go mm-hmm. yeah um i have a thought about Ooh. you said something in response to the first one about like taking a break between mm-hmm. partners and I was thinking that this relationship sounds like she's taking a break between partners. Like it feels like a break in between partners. I feel like it's really common to like start dating someone after, I don't know how long she's been divorced or how long this divorce process has been happening or whatever. Um, but it, in my experience, the relationships that like happen like on the tail end of something else mm-hmm. are like, 
healing something that happened in the prior relationship or like you're continuing Mm -hmm. to work out some shit that happened. Yeah. And so it could be, and it's also really helpful and a combat in my life for this person to be someone that I knew before, like that we had some pre-existing relationship. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like this kind of dynamic is like not, not uncommon or like that big of a deal. Like it doesn't have to be taken as that big of a deal. So that just leading into, is it selfish of me to pursue a relationship with a married man? How serious are you trying to be with this married man? Like, okay, you asked us because we're grimy and you know, we're not going to judge you for this. I hope that's why you ask because I identify with that. (laughs) But so like, I'm not going to, poo poo you or talk shit about you for being with a married man um i do not endorse it i think it is not a good idea i have done it i would not recommend it and i feel like to be honest just for your mental health i think you should get out of it as soon as you can just because it i feel like even the best case scenario is not a really a very good case scenario but it could be like some bridges of madison county shit i don't know maybe y'all are like deep love affair and like you need this forever and this is your forever person but i think actually that's what happened in bridges of madison county i don't want to spoil but i think that actually they didn't end up being together and it was just like for that time period because like sometimes you just need to fucking have incredible incredibly deep conversations with someone and then you need to move on with your life. Let the hours pass in moments. Literally. That sounds connected. so beautiful. Here's what I have to say. <clears throat> and I used to be very hardline about you didn't make any commitments in that relationship. It is not your responsibility to worry about somebody else's committed relationship. If you're fucking somebody and they haven't told their partner, that is on them. You're right, Maya. Yes, good. Excuse me. Bless you. Thank you. Got another one? Probably. Um, Yeah, so I used to be really intense about that. And I think now I'm just kind of like, what do you want to do with your life? Mm. Like, forget that person. Forget fucking. Forget. What do you want in your life? What do you want from your life? Do you want hoes banging on your door? Mm. Which could happen. Maybe it won't, but it could. Do you want the toxic residue of the lying and the manipulating? Do you want to find out where he said to her he was when it's he's with you because he's going to do it to you that's the thing that's, that's fucked up thing. about it is that that's he's going to do thing. it to you so yeah. do this as long as you want literally i, I wouldn't say that it i don't think it's self self it's sure whatever the last two people that i have had um mm, sweetness with have been like right at the end of a divorce mm. and it's a really special time i think for especially people socialized as women mm. at the end of a divorce to be like what you said about freedom, all of that. I say do what you want to do. But I would also say ask yourself, is this what you want to be doing? And all of the pieces of it, not just the beautiful pieces of the connection you have with this person, but all of the strings that come attached, all of the connections that person is connected to also. Is that what you want? And if it is today, dope and if it is this week or this month or this year dope and if it's not at any point you know how to you know how to get out of something yeah that's all you do yeah exactly <laughs> literally like you already know how to get out of you know something how to get out so of you just get out of it yeah and so that's what i would say it's like yeah it's selfish in a way that's like it's not your those people's problems not your problem literally. but do you want to make it your problem the oh more you like stick around for it do you want her at your house his wife think about it do you want her at your house Talking, you say you got three kids. Justified, like, literally justified to be at your house, low key. Bare minimum, just in her feelings. Like um, Samantha in had this situation down. on Sex and the City. She was fucking a married guy, and then his wife was like on three way calling, and then I feel like, like went no. like found her or something. And no. it's like, do you want that? No. no. This one was talking about like her. This woman on the show was like, well, I, we could have a threesome. No, no, no one said anything about that. Like, do you want that? Because there's always this other person to consider 
on and the like, note of empathy. Yeah. On the note of not being a narcissist. On the note of not being a narcissist. One narcissist. would just have to really sit with a woman and be like, dang, I am fucking your husband. And that is destabilizing in your partnership. And that, you know, is something I did knowingly. And here you are, a whole ass person just like me. Literally. Like that's the min this is the minimum I feel like you would need to at least think for a second and if somebody's at your house. It's so unfortunate because if you are talking about the person that your partner is with, y'all have a lot in common. Like whether you know it or not, you're very similar people. So like thinking of that person that's and true. just thinking like, how would I feel in this situation? That's <clears throat> the empathy kicking in and it's a helpful uh, guide and it's way classier than the judgment of like why is he doing it doesn't matter yeah, not anybody's he's, business he's doing who whatever cares? He's literally not, who cares because don't we have a different conversation about him precisely. if he writes it we have different conversations precisely about why <laughs> why you know mask people in this world feel like it's cool to just, just mask well i'm speaking with my yeah, people <laughs> <laughs> why we love misogyny so much that we'll just like use women for any old reason at all just any old time and just lie to them and just whatever the fuck fuck that that whole statement is not just mask shut I feel up. Like that's, shut up <laughs> no but, <laughs> not you obviously I was shutting no up I was idea. Like, <laughs> yeah i feel like there's a it's a place that we all go to and it is misogyny for sure on all ends and it, there's a place that we go to of like yeah, I don't give a fuck about that bitch. Actually, like, period. <laughs> and I don't know how else to put it. And like, it sounds bad because it is bad. And it is what it is. We're not all good all the time. Totally. And so that's helpful in the context with him is that, damn, I can only imagine there's no, nobody wants to do shit like this. You know, like, you don't want to be, I don't think people actively want to cause generally harm. yeah like you don't want to hurt other people yeah. and like if you are doing it sometimes you'll like convince yourself that you're not like on or some that kind you of had no other option literally and like what else were you gonna do right. um abide by your marriage vows <laughs> like be brave yeah but be honest with yeah. yourself anybody else i feel like even though so one of the reasons that i'm like kind of anti being in this type of relationship with someone who's married is that the best case scenario for you is like what that he leaves his wife right. and like then the goal? yeah because even if he leaves his wife there's going to be a whole period of like him figuring his own shit out that you know and then no yeah <laughs> and it's like you're gonna need to yeah, like y'all probably wouldn't be together through that anyway. So like, but even if you are, what's the quality of that? I mean, not yeah. quality. Like, maybe y'all are trauma bonding, and that's amazing, cool. dope. Yeah. But like, still, it's it's not simple. So the question is, is it selfish? Like, maybe a little bit, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not simple. That's for sure. Yes, that is for sure. It's not simple, and it like, it's not bad. You're not a bad person. It can be selfish and you not be a bad person. I don't think you're a bad person. I did just low key think about like, how is that not the most narcissistic ass thing though? To be lying to your wife and fucking your ex who just got out of a marriage? That sounds like. He's a narcissist, bro. No? Am well, I no, wrong? No, I mean like, she got a type. Man, she knows. Oh, That's why she out here looking for the signs, man. She knows all about it. And it is what it is. I mean, you I say maybe the person I'll be who, life friends. Yeah. Clearly, I mean, y'all stayed in touch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like sometimes, sometimes you do need to fuck and let hours turn into moments for mm -hmm. like a good minute, like maybe years. I don't know how long y'all are gonna need to do this, but like, he's maybe not the Marion type, you know? Oh yeah, maybe he's like, maybe he would be a great like boyfriend or like you're solo Polly and he mm -hmm. is too or something. Maybe that's his path. Who knows? But and yeah. that you're helping him like really understand more about what that is. And yeah, that could be dope. I believe in transformation for all people at all times. Yes. And who better than a long-term friend, long-time friend, like somebody who's going to be down for you. Mm -hmm. Dang, y'all have known each other more than 30 with. years. Yeah, if you've known each other for that long, there's no reason to go throwing away friendships no, and shit like that. that. Like, or just, judging people for their choices. But it is the place for honesty. Like you can really keep yeah. it real with this person. And don't You be, should talk to him about it. Yeah, I think this is just a big old conversation. Yeah. Yeah. You should be like, look, okay, I don't feel good about the fact that you're married, period. And maybe I've been acting like I was, but maybe I was lying. Well, no, the, it's the married is fine. It's the lying. Because I advocate fucking other people while you're married. And the hoes have arrangements there out are here. Arrangements there out are. There. Yeah. Because, you know, maybe his wife is ready for something to change. Like, maybe they just, maybe he needs the confidence yeah. to have that 
bigger conversation with himself with first. himself first and yeah. then with his wife Dang. there's a lot of opportunity how here. powerful bless you bless you is mm. what i have fortitude and, and and gratitude and every all the blessings to you thanks good for luck. writing in. good luck yeah, with all this. thanks for writing in. Uh, Astro thought of the week is that next the eclipses just mm -hmm. uh, we just had a couple of eclipses and there's more to come this year but we just like came out of an eclipse season mm. that I feel like I'm still rocking from this lunar eclipse did you feel this you know I'm sure I did I don't think I necessarily totally. lined it up with that those words but certainly been it's felt like emotional turnover it's been a lot of big days like, yeah i've cr I cried on set this week which mm -hmm. i was um relating this morning that i didn't i actually left the set to cry mm -hmm. in a moment that was appropriate for that when we weren't shooting because it was just really stressful all in a moment and i felt like communication was i was like i could do better at this whatever so i left and i cried and in the bathroom or something and I came back and I wasn't crying and I was able to do my job and I feel like I'm starting to understand that there's a groove in me around like I don't know not needing so desperately for my emotional needs to be the most important thing even to me in a moment you know and that can be it can be weather systems that pass and I can tend to them when it works well for me too you know when it doesn't make for other emotional problems <laughs> to tend to them right now and so it's an interesting like uh, yoga practice for sure. So yeah, I mean, shit like that, I feel like I'm definitely on the edge or like coming through some realization, some like um, light after dark kind of moment, you know? Hell yeah. Um, where I just feel a little bit more sturdy internally or something. Like I, like I understand things differently maybe about my power specifically absolutely what about you that's gorgeous releasing from the eclipse oh my god all my shit about being a victim and like mm. needing somebody to be you're totally right you've called me out on this so much and we've talked about it a lot but i've been realizing a lot the ways that i'm like i seek victimhood and i seek like being the one who has been hurt or put upon and like just like really acknowledging that because it's not even for me i don't even know that it's so much in the actively doing something different it's just like really looking at every part of that mm -hmm. and being like okay so but are you a victim though actually mm -hmm. can you just take responsibility for this like maybe there's nobody coming to hold you maybe you can just hold yourself and like it doesn't i get really like really mean with it yeah. where i'm like i'm like you should do and it's like very much like you know in them that show on amazon and that, that we won't finish it's so scary but i do want to finish it but there's the little girl sees that uh person that's like it's like her inner demon the um she's called like miss something or other mm. she's like a very scary old lady mm. and that is how the person is inside of me that's like mm. really mean to me and just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you should you should know you shouldn't do that and i feel like lunar eclipse is like like scrub it up 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 on a rug it's just like like sloughing shit off the pavement it's off like wood or something which is like kicking it up and I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. I think so about the that. descriptions of my friends have given me that um, about going to the Korean spa and how they mm -hmm. like scrub all the dead skin off your whole body. Mm -hmm. And there's like a pile of dead skin next to the. I'm thinking about deck cleaning. Oh, okay. You it's know, the like same a, though. No, totally. But I feel like deck cleaning. Like power closer. washing a deck. Yeah, but like, you know, like when you get like a deck brush, like if you. Um, if you're cleaning a kitchen floor and you get one of those brushes that's no, just like it. a fucking yeah and you're just like pulling up shit it's like after you've mopped and then you deck clean uh -huh. and it's just like what the fuck was even down there like yeah. this is is there's so much um your victim stuff though oh um like what thing specifically no no, no 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 i was just remembering that's what you had just said oh yeah it's interesting that what does it feel like 
like how would you describe where where you are now like thinking about it I mean, I think I'm probably today going to find a way to be a victim. So I don't mean to just make it sound like I've made some sort of massive revelation or resolution in my life. But I do feel more powerful whenever I say I, I can just take the blame. You know, like I can just be, I can be the one. I can be accountable. Because mm. that's also, that feels like a really big part of it to me is like accountability and yeah. being like, there's nowhere else to turn. This is me. Totally nice. The other um, astro thought of the week was that tomorrow is the first day of Gemini season. And I do feel like that is, I'm, I'm leaning into that a little. What happens in Gemini season? Fun, flirty, function, good times. Fun Gemini's no man. Gemini season is fun. All right. I feel like it's historically always been fun. Have you had fun this time of year? Let me think. What is this time of year? It's like May, late May, early June. That's when the parties are out. That's when. Well, you like to have your body out. I feel like that's it's a when different. Body, that's when thighs come out. That's a different lifestyle. I think I'm only recently into that. And so maybe this Sunshine. will be my the best Gemini season ever. I wonder if you. Well, yeah. Yeah, maybe it will be. Who knows? You want to get out of here? Let's go. Oh, on. no. We, we got to do the trivia question. <sighs> Yeah, just one more thing. All right, one more thing then, mate. This week's trivia question, which we will give the answer at the top of next week's episode. The question is, which of the Golden Girls had a gay brother? I didn't know the answer to this question. But now we know. And you'll know next week, unless you already know, in which case, hit us on social or hold it in your heart, and then we'll talk about it next time. Yeah. We'll be back next time. With, with the answer more dear jasmine oh that's great yeah <laughs> we'll be back next time with more dear, dear jasmine that's okay, bye, funny <laughs> okay goodbye <laughs> dear jasmine is produced by tender fire media for more on our show follow us on spotify and instagram at dear jasmine or head over to our website dear jasmine.com If you're an Apple podcast person, you can subscribe to our show. And while you're there, write us a review. They really help us out a lot. And they give you a place to let folks know how you feel about our show. Here's our team. Kylie C. Roberts is our editor slash producer. Angel Foster and Naya Williams do our social media. Jamie Leppard draws our art and Fruit Snack plays our theme song. Montez Mickles is our director of production. Anna Rooney is my chief of staff. Amber Richardson is Ash's chief of staff. Ash Danger Phoenix is my co-host and co-producer. And I am Jessamine Stanley. And we believe that no one should be in jail for weed. Tender fire. Drop page.